Today we're learning how to make this animated honeycomb presentation all the way from scratch in PowerPoint, including the transitions to white slides and the rest of your presentation or yellow slides and a closing of the slide deck. Let's start from a blank slide and we're going to add a shape, hold shift to increase the size evenly, hold shift while you turn and then turn it right 90 degrees. Remove the outline, give it a yellow color and then we want to copy duplicates. We're going to do that by control and dragging. So hold control key and drag it to the left and the right. Select the three shapes, distribute horizontally and then you can see they're evenly spaced between each other. Move them to the right of your slide and you can go over the edge of the right side, that doesn't really matter. And now we hold control while we drag. Now we want to shift it a little bit to the left so they nicely fit into each other. Select two and add them to the top. And let's add a few more at the bottom. Select the three in the middle, hold control and drag them to the bottom so they match nicely. And then let's do one more row. Let's add the two from the top and add them at the bottom. This gives us quite a nice shape to work with. You can select them all and you can play around with the positioning so they cover the border of the slides. If you group them, you can also scale them downwards. Um, that really depends what you want. Let's keep it to quite a large size in this case because we want to overflow on the edges to the next slide. Shape format and merge shapes. If it's grayed out, make sure you ungroup again and then merge shape union. This way we have created one large shape of the honeycomb pattern. Let's add an image to the page. Here we can see the image is kind of looking towards the right and we want it the other way so it fits the honeycomb lines and it looks towards the slide. Align, uh, let's rotate and flip horizontally and this way the person is looking to the left towards the content of the slide. That is always a little bit better. Increase the size so it covers the honeycomb because we're going to use this as a background image within, within that shape that we've created. And now we're going to cut it so it's on our clipboard, right click the shape, format shape, fill options, and we're going for a picture fill. Then you can select a clipboard option and this will add whatever image you have on your clipboard. Deselect rotate with shape and then it will fit the shape nicely. Format background for the slide, gradient fill, and now we're going to add a yellow orange tint gradient fill. So from the top we want a nice yellow color and at the bottom we will go for a orange one. Let's make it a little bit more orange so go to colors and then drag the color a little bit more to the orange side to the red side so it's a darker color that looks a bit nicer. Play around with the settings you can really customize this however you like. Next, we want to click on the shape and the image that we've created. So click on the honeycomb, right click format picture, and we're going to add a shadow. So go to the shadow tab and then make an inner drop shadow from the top right. Increase the blur a little bit, play around with the transparency. And for the angle, you can also choose whichever angle the shadow comes from. Let's pretend that the light is coming from the top left, so it leaves a nice drop shadow to the bottom right. I think that's the best way to create a clear cut between the rest of the slide. Transparency a little bit less. That looks good. Now we want to make the transition to the next slide. So let's go to the slides on the left, right click new slide, remove the title and text area and add a format background and a gradient fill. Because we're using the push transition later on, we want the dark side, so the bottom here, and the yellow side, we want to reverse it. So the orange is on top and the yellow is at the bottom. This way, when we connect the slides, they will nicely flow into each other. Select the shape from the first slide, paste it on the second slide, and now drag, select the image from the bottom line of your slide. So this area, hold shift while you drag it, and drag until the cursor meets the top of your slide. This way, when we do the push transition, it will look like it's one big image. Now let's add some elements to the slide. 
So go to the first title slide, edit Xbox. You can add your title here. Let's just use the word title. Select the text, make it white. And for a font, we're going for Montserrat and black, which is a pretty heavy font. That will always look nice. Increase the font size to about 100. Subtitle, we're going to reduce the font size and let's add the word subtitle here. A nice contrast with the black, the heavy font is a handwritten font. So let's go for a sign painter, increase the size a little bit, remove the bold aspect and center it in the middle, center both in the middle. And then position them so everything is evenly balanced on the side, equal sides on the left and on the right. You can overlay them onto each other and then right click format object and add a drop shadow. So let's add a drop shadow from the top right. You can modify the settings however you want. It depends on the background color that you're using. And for subtitle, we want the drop shadow to go the opposite way. So to the top, so that it nicely jumps out from the word title. Let's increase the blur. And this gives an extra nice touch to the subtitle title. Let's move it a little bit downwards. That looks about right. Let's add one of the extra shapes that we've created. Hold shift, drag it to the right, remove the fill, and let's give it a white outline. Right click format shape, and we're going to make it transparent. So select the line and then add transparency to it. To about 80%. Maybe increase the width of the line a little bit more until you are happy. Position it on the top left of the slide, and these are just some elements to fill up the slide a little bit more and to stay consistent with the honeycomb team that we are using control drag to create a copy reduce the size and connect them next to each other leave a little bit of a gap in between and maybe let's also connect it to the picture so that it looks like one consistent image on the slide that's always nice if you add some multiple elements that instead of just leaving some blank space on the slide. Maybe one more at the bottom to fill it up and don't be afraid to go over the border of the slides. That way, if you connect the slides, you can also connect the elements. So in this case, the small one stays on the first slide and the larger one at the bottom left, it will overlay or overlap with the following slide. And what we want to do in this case is we want to select the bottom shapes and then copy them to the second slide. Paste them on the second slide. Again, grab them at the bottom of the slide. Hold shift while you drag them to the top and release them once you meet the edge of the top slide. Let's add some more elements on this page as well. And then add some text to it. So let's go to the first slide, select the title and subtitle and paste them on the second slide. Align to the left, shift them up a little bit, remove, uh, put the subtitle down and reduce the font size because we're going to add some chapter titles. Position them until you're happy. And let's change this to, for example, chapter one and let's create multiple chapter titles. Reduce the font size, subtitle, chapter, and also add some dummy text to a text box. And I like to add quite some text because it's always easier to remove text from a slide than to add it. So if you can do it with quite a lot of text, it will also look nice with a lot less text. Position it evenly, balance it in the middle. And on the bottom right, we're having quite some empty space. So let's add a negative shape there honeycomb insert icon and let's look for an icon this could be whatever icon you like that fits your content let's go for a travel in this case and create one of the let's take this one here the path insert you can easily change the color so graphics fill and make it white and then position it within that honeycomb structure 
If it's too much, you can format a graphic and reduce the transparency so it's a little bit more subtle. And that's just one of the extra design elements that supports your vis visual or your slide, but doesn't take away all the attention. Transitions and add a push transition. And if you do it from the bottom, so push from the bottom and then increase the duration, it will look quite nicely as if the slides are connected together. And that is the effect that we want to create. Now, of course, if we want to go for a second slide, let's look at the transitioning and how we transition to a wide slide, because that's often difficult. Let's right click new slide, format background, gradient fill, and here we're going from a wide background. Not all the way white, but let's take a slight gradient to some gray. This always makes the slides a little bit more interesting to look at versus just plain white. Copy some of the elements, chapter, subtitle, text, and the shape. Let's make it chapter two and change the font color to something dark gray. Same thing here, black is very hard so if you go for like 90 or 95 percent black that will look a lot better the subtitle chapter let's remove the drop shadow or let's add it a lot less that looks better let's also grab some of the shapes put it on the new slide that we've created change the color to gray position it to the top remove or reduce the width and then let's scale it down a little bit. Hold control while you drag, and in this case, let's do a collection of three. So they're nicely interlinked with each other and position them on the right side of the slide. This gives an equal balance. For the bottom left one, we're going to add an image. So go to fill, picture fill, and whatever is on your clipboard, you can edit here, rotate with angle, let rotate with shape, let's remove that. And for the other two, let's add an icon. So again, let's look for the travel icons in the standard library. You can add whichever one that you want. A mountain and a road. Right click format object and increase the transparency to 90%. Put them in the boxes and you can scale them up. Now the slide needs some extra elements, so let's copy some of the shapes and distribute them on the slide. Maybe connect a little one here to the collection of tree. And let's do something on the top left as well. Increase the size. You can really play around with the sizes. They don't all have to be the same. Reduce the size of a small one next to it. It's always good to have them together. And for the extra elements, they look a bit too much, so let's format object and reduce the transparency a little bit. Transparency to 95%. That way it's more subtle. For the image, we can remove the outline. Then we have a clean border, so no line. That looks better. And for the large shapes, maybe let's add a yellow touch and put the transparency to zero. Yeah, this looks a little bit more balanced and connected with the previous slides. Now let's look at the alternative slides and how to transition to other slides in the presentation. Let's say you want something else than white slides. Let's create a new one, remove the text and title field and add a full image to the background. Add a rectangle on top of it. Remove the outline and shape fill, let's make it yellow. Or maybe let's make a gradient. Format shape, gradient fill. And let's go for a same orange with a yellow gradient fill. And maybe turn it around so the bottom is a little bit heavier, darker. And the transparency, let's add a little bit of a transparency, the image in the background, so it really pops out and it shines through a little bit. It's always playing around with the settings. It really depends on the image that you're using. In this case, maybe an extra stop would be nice where the yellow is 100%, so not transparent at all. This is looking quite good. Let's add some of the content, so chapter, 
make a chapter tree and add some of the elements. Let's position it a little bit more to the right so it doesn't all have to be the same on every slide. It really depends on the visual that you're using on each slide. Let's add some of the background elements and position them on the slide. Maybe one at the right because there's quite a lot of empty space. Increase some of them in size and use a couple of smaller ones. Maybe one large one at the bottom. Connect it with a few smaller ones. I'll speed up this process so you can create about five, six different shapes on, on this page. Maybe some at the bottom left and a few at the top until you're happy with the result. Now let's look at the closing slide and how you could end this presentation. For that, we're going to duplicate the last slide, chapter three slide, right click, duplicate slide, and drag the content to the left. So drag it out of the slide and with some different intervals, because we're going to apply the morph transition and the shapes we're going to reduce and reshape them a little bit. So the small ones, we're going to make them big and the big ones, we're going to make them small and reposition them slightly. That way it gives a very cool dynamic effect when we say the closing words. Let's also get the title and subtitle because I kind of liked that format, position them in the center and let's add the closing words. Maybe thanks for watching align to center. And then change it to thanks. Grease the box a little bit so it fits on one line. And the subtitle we can do thanks for watching. Now we also want to grab this, put it on the previous slide, and drag it to the bottom so that it can fly in with the morph transition. Now, as a final step, we want to add the transition effects, adding all the slide transitions. So on the first slides, we want to add the push transition, similar to the second slide. And let's add it to two seconds so it doesn't happen too fast. And on the last one, we want to add the morph transition, also two seconds. And now let's preview. Now you know how to make this nice honeycomb style presentation with all connected slides. Also how to connect to white slides in the background or to something different with an image slide with a gradient overlay. Thanks a lot for watching, I hope you liked the video and if you want to learn more about PowerPoint make sure to look at the video on screen right now.